So, the final topic. I really feel we should um, discuss um, whether or not we believe um, diversity should be a business issue. Because nowadays, some people seem to recruit diverse talent mainly for the benefit of maybe just looking good to other people they may do business with. And as much as this could be something positive, this could also lead to tokenism within certain industries. So, um, D, firstly, would you like to just discuss what your views on that and then we'll discuss the rest of the panel? Yeah, I think it's a difficult one. For me, it's not a yes or no answer. Because, I mean, you look at companies like Nike who have done the adverts with um, Colin Kaepernick and it's like, hmm, are, they, are they doing it, you know, to, to, you know, for the wrong reasons? I mean, I read something that said that the CEO of Nike is a Republican. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy and it's like, well, where are your, where are your values? What, why, are you doing, why are you doing what you're doing? Is it... Is it coming from a place of you know actually caring about these issues and caring about diversity, or is it just because you see it as a money making opportunity? Mm. And to me, that's a really dangerous thing, and I don't agree with it in that sense. But then at the same time, you you look at it and it's like, well, it's starting a conversation. Mm. So is it a good thing because it's been spoken about more, people are more aware of it? Um, coming here at night, you know, every, everyone's seen those adverts, everyone becomes aware of these issues so I think it has yes and no but mm. it shouldn't you know if it, if it is being made a business issue it should be coming from a genuine place otherwise mm. it becomes a, a whole different kind of thing so mm. yeah okay. well, you have any, you have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot <laughs> um, my, my my kind of got is that it should be, and that you should do it to reflect the population that you have and to reflect um, the best of thought within your organisation. I think that's always a good thing. Um, but the big problem that you have is that these organisations ultimately, people will go back, no, but it's true, they ultimately don't care. Um, and the reason they don't care is because the thing that they care about is money. Um, you know, we live in a capitalist society now as well, and these companies all work. They have their employment, their workforce, and their workforce are working and, and are exploited to make money for the company. That's mm. how it, how the system works. Yeah. You know, that's why you're paid in a cruel terms. You're meant to do the work, and then you get paid mm. rather than paid in advance from a commission perspective. Yeah. Mm. That's why it gets paid more. They do. Mm. Um, so ultimately, unless it affects that monetary value that the company has for its employees and its general workforce, they're not going to. Care or change, mm -hmm. so that's often why you see big law firms making some changes when their clients demanded it. And they're like, Oh, well, we're going to go with this firm because they've got more diverse candidates, mm -hmm. or their workforce looks like the kind of you know we need to work with. Mm -hmm. And then firms are kind of struggling to change mm -hmm. um, because they realize their money has been affected. Mm -hmm. um, it's a shame that organizations don't sort of understand that, it, well, not so much they don't understand, but they don't place importance on having a, a diverse workforce for the sake of it. But like we, we, we've mentioned in various other segments, it, it is the fear of the other. And if you're talking about from a British perspective, mm -hmm. that is definitely kind of um, stratified by that race and class. Yes. So there's a reason that you don't have black people who are uh, on boards of power and things like that. Um, there's a reason that you know you might see some Asian people in certain positions of power, um, but you might see them within wider structures that they've created themselves, mm -hmm. but you won't see them. Mm -hmm. um, in certain other structures, it, there's a reason for all of these things. They're not just oh, people are putting themselves forward. They're not trying. There's a whole system stopping people from doing that, mm -hmm. and it exists for a particular reason because mm -hmm. the people within that, as far as they're concerned, a lot of their power comes from um, from from supremacy. Them feeling important, and if you take that away from people, mm -hmm. and if that's what you've built up as a whole culture and a whole identity, then you're having to almost destroy a part of the person's self. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, if you have a whole group of people that think like that, yeah. Um, they, they can't they can't cope. And an example is when you uh, I remember watching a video on, on social media recently there was a man uh, there was a white man who was working on the streets in London I think it was um, and there were a lot of young girls coming out of school and they were all um, wearing uh, hijabs and he was kind of like you know in England they used to speak English like this is how it used to be and this is what it's like now and that's that's a huge example of him mm -hmm. feeling powerless in his own country despite the fact that 
um, he's seen all he's seen is children going to school who are from different different villages and ethnic backgrounds. That is all he's seen, mm -hmm. but he feels that like that's an attack on his identity. Mm -hmm. And so with companies, it's exactly the same thing. Um, and it's very very frustrating when you're having to try and affect that change in a workplace yeah. um, because. You sometimes when you're trying to say, oh, we should hire more people from different backgrounds, as far as they're concerned, their power has been taken away from them. Yeah. And if they're a powerful person, they see that affecting everything that they hold dear. Yeah. Um, and that's the big, 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 big problem. Um, it, it, unfortunately, it has to be a diverse, diversity has to be a business issue. I wish it wasn't, but it has to be. But it's it's getting an organisation, depending on what level they're at, especially if they're a law firm, mm -hmm. to care. Because if they're a big global law firm, that might work. But if you're a smaller local law firm, are you left out to care of the people that you support, or people within the village or town you support, or you work with? Mm -hmm. um, and in particular, if all those people are either mostly white or mostly um, middle or upper middle class, then are you really going to bother necessarily? Mm -hmm. um, it depends as well. Um, you have, uh, in terms of um, smaller law firms, in terms of like soldier areas, specifically if they're solicitors. Um, it's quite common to see them being from um, an ethnic minority background. It's very, very, very common. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes in the bigger firms where they make a lot more money where you don't see as much diversity. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a really interesting sort of thing that you find um, on, on different ends of the spectrum. Um, and then it, it, even further, it's when someone's in that, if they're in a large organisation, that person trying to penetrate to the heart of that organisation where the money gets higher, the building targets get bigger, um, and the people become more powerful within the circles that they move in. That's when you start to realise that there's not as many people from the adverse backgrounds. In reality, mm -hmm. the core of the old boys club is still there. They're all still pally pally. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's it's a shame. But I wonder what it's like. What's it like from a, a virus's perspective? I think it's it's true in that the old boys club still does exist. If we don't acknowledge that, then what we're doing, mm -hmm. it might be changing. And slowly, it is junior bar. You're seeing a lot more diversity, a lot more women, a lot more fame, um barristers. But I think the old boys. I mean, it is gradually phasing out the old boys club. And I think there's more value being seen in um, having diverse barristers, essentially. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot of work to be done. And Dee was saying about whether it's whether they really believe that, whether it's authentic. And I think mm -hmm. if you're not um, authentic in the way that you're um, that, that you're advertising yourself, or if you're not authentic in in the way you're presenting yourself as a, as a chambers, then that comes across. Um, so just going on the fact of going to school and things like that. If you've got barristers that are going in giving a presentation. That's all well and good, but personally I believe that's self-congratulatory because all you're doing is sitting in front of room people who are just saying, oh, well done, you've done a good job. That might be inspirational, but it's more inspirational to see, for students to see that change in themselves, to see that potential in themselves. So I think really what we want is more prolonged contact. We're wanting mm -hmm. advocacy workshops, we're wanting meeting yeah. programmes, court visits, where uh, professionals, barristers, solicitors, who are successful in their own areas, getting involved in students, putting students, giving students new experiences, so the students go, oh damn, I've seen myself in a position I never thought I would be in. Mm. I can see myself in that role. So it's more inspirational for them to see that potential in themselves mm. rather than seeing someone else who's gone there and done that. So I think we need to work a lot. If if companies really do believe in um, changing, in getting to a more diverse culture, then they need to be more, more proactive about the what they are doing, not just, uh, you know, who they're, who they're doing it to, but how they are getting that diverse by more engaged, more meaningful partnerships mm. with gra at the grassroots level, within the schools, in the organisations that they're going to, at the universities, it needs to be more meaningful um, to affect any kind of change. Mm. I was going to add to that actually, it's spot on. And another thing um, is that if you have a company who's obviously um, dealing with tenders for law firms, um, you have to ensure that the client has a diverse group of people within it. So if it doesn't, as an organisation, um, and there's no diverse people or people from diverse backgrounds in a variety of ways, on either their board, working in their legal team, um, then you're going to have the similar problem that you'll have within a law firm. Because they might notice that that law firm is not diverse, but then if everybody in the client's organisation has the same level of lack of diversity as the law firm, then in reality what is going to happen is they'll be like, oh well, yeah, okay, we'll just go with it, it's fine. Yeah. And then you'll just have people kind of either congratulate each other for not really doing anything, <laughs> yeah, or um, yeah. you'll have people who are just accepting um, the status quo. So that's why it's very important that 
this is a wider societal issue um, and that you kind of don't just think oh well it's the, the status quo is fine as it is mm-hmm. everyone has to kind of keep pushing as far as they can um, and I remember being at several events before and we were talking about um, what it's like to see less and less PME people on boards um, and I think it was I think it's mostly for uh, either quasi public and private companies um, but across the board the amount of people who are of PME um, background is actually decreasing on boards um, year on year on year to the extent that if we keep going there won't be anybody on them mm-hmm. so while society as a, as a whole is getting more and more diverse mm-hmm. the people who are at the top of professions or boards in particular it's funny enough it's almost going back in time mm-hmm. so it's strange you kind of got you, it's almost like the pyramid it's just kind of getting wider at the bottom and it's getting more and more small as you mm-hmm. kind of go up um, and that's something that's really important to remember because people don't think of that they think oh it's wonderful you're seeing lots of young black sisters that's wonderful but what happens when all those young black sisters actually disappear because there's mm-hmm. no one that looks at them at the top yeah. and that's what you're seeing in a lot of professions there people are, are hemorrhaging out because they can't stand working places where you know you bring something to work and people ask you you know but that looks really interesting, what is it? And then you'll eat and it's all that looks like a rock, but it's not a rock because you have the mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's a food, it's like if you were eating like chips, like, like oh, what are those sticks? Or those, <laughs> those, 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 those sticks that look like, I don't know, that look like pens. Mm-hmm. And some of them are classic as our comment. Mm-hmm. But for someone, it's an attack on their culture. Yeah. And it's for people to understand that someone's eating food. Let them eat their food and mind your business. So, so what you're saying is keep bringing plans into the work. <laughs> 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 quite literally, quite literally. I wonder what you think. Uh, this is actually so interesting you guys are talking about. That's actually something I want to segue into in terms of um, looking at role models from a more senior perspective and trying to like, ascertain whether or not the industry for you. Um, from my perspective, I do believe that you know there should be more um, methods made once you're inside the industry in order to retain people, as you said, making sure people understand the, the culture that's within them and making sure they reach out to people coming up in the industry, showing them that example and hopefully giving them some sort of energy to move forward. But what do you think, just as a, a rounding off point of the discussion, that um, these companies, organisations, chambers or firms could do in order to retain people, diverse talent? Um, yeah, listen. And um, people are kind of like, what? I'm like, listen. Because some of the first, the, the biggest barrier I've experienced is I would, you can say something to someone and they'll tell you they we need to keep trust and inclusion in this and the third. And I tell them, okay, this is wonderful. From a young black person's perspective, you could do this, this, and this. And then they're like, oh, wait, you, I have to do something? And I was like, yeah, yeah. You have to listen and then you have to act. Um, and I think that's the, the core part of it. And this is not going to be an easy process because you're in a way alongside having to diversify the institution and whatnot. You are part of that institution from a, the actual organization you work for, a perspective, but societal and that involves you changing your mind. It's not us changing the processes at work to make sure we get more diverse talent. It's you yourself changing. Mm-hmm. Um, people have to recognise that, and if they don't recognise that and realise that they are part of the change, it's not just the workforce itself. It's a wider societal project that's going to last for many, many decades, if not a few centuries, to undo all of the damage that's been done for the last yeah. four centuries. Mm-hmm. It's going to take it not not half or the same amount of time to get rid of things slowly but surely. So that's what you've got to do, you've got to listen and you've got to act to the um, and spe- specifically to do things for the people who are affected. And if they're saying something, you've got to listen and do that. I'd agree. I think it's a two-way thing. Mm-hmm. Companies have got to respect people regardless of their background, regardless of where they've come from. They have to respect how they've got there as well. Mm-hmm. But in the same way, don't apologise for being who you are. Don't apologise for being Caribbean. It's a good mm-hmm. thing. It makes you good at your job. And I think that it, when we understand that, that there's values that companies and the individual can have when they work together. We can challenge it, but there's a long way to go. Yeah, I think just echoing from what you said about listening, um, I think the workplace is not just a workplace, it's a build up of individuals, and those individuals need to be willing to listen to others and you know, actively take upon themselves to dismantle everything that they've learned, and everything that society's told them about you know, people that are different to them. So I would say that listen and just be aware of the privilege and I definitely agree with the points made. It's some fantastic points made um, in terms of how to improve the diversity. I think listening is just 
as a really cool concept though, because people seem to think they know all the answers without actually living and being yeah. part of our experience of being black or yeah. Asian or minority background. And I think if people could just open their ears and pay attention to what we're saying, yeah. then maybe, just maybe, there might be free diversity. But that's the end of this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Um, it's been a fantastic discussion. Um, make sure you check out the work done by Isaac, the Black Men in Law Network. Make sure you check out Fazina's progress, helping people um, get into the industry. And make sure you press the thumbs up, all of that stuff. Like all of that subscribe. Jazz. Do all of that. <laughs> Do all of that. And see you soon. Bye. <laughs>